rotating to the hip. New runner. Hey guys, Hunter Britt with Invictus. Today we're talking about banded deadlifts. My main point of all of this is you need to have good technique and speed. This is not what the video is specifically about, but all of this does not matter if you're not lifting with proper form and you're not lifting the bar really fast because what we're talking about is mostly used in dynamic lifting. You can go heavy, even then it's gotta be fast. All right, so in your program, you're typically gonna see banded deadlifts written as a bar weight plus a band tension. What that means is bar weight is just the percentage of the bar versus your one rep max. So don't overthink that. On the bands, it's percentage of your one rep max in band tension total at the top of lockout. So if your max is 400 pounds, then you're gonna want, if it's 25% band tension, you're gonna want 50 pounds of band tension on this side and 50 on that side. So make sure they're even um, as you go through it, but that's how you're gonna read it just to make sure you set this up correctly. If you don't know how to figure out your band tension, uh, well, there's one really main way to do it. Get one of those mobile scales, pick up the band, hold it at lockout, and then subtract your body weight. That's how much each side will pull down. All right, so three different types of setups here. This is my favorite inside of a rig. What you'll see is you have anchor bolts over holding bands stretched across the bar. This is the way to be the most accurate, most consistent every time you do deadlifts. Right. Second best way to do this is stretch the band over the bar. That way it's always in a consistent spot. However, this is a little bit more difficult to actually get a band that you like and the tension you like. And it's a little tougher on the bands in my opinion, just because it's stretching a band so far. Um, so if you don't have a rig, you go to this next. And then we have one more easier way to do this. If you don't want to stretch a band over it uh, the way I'm doing it, what you can do is just take, you know, whatever band that's actually appropriate for your weight. Then you'll drop it over the bar and then you'll stand on it while you wrap it over the bar. And then you'll stand it on both sides. That's how you're going to get kind of some more band tension. However, this doesn't really get you very heavy on band tension. So this is a last resort. Um, all right, so if you have a rig and you can set it up the way that I like you to set it up, what you're going to need is an anchor bolt or some type of pin. So whatever rig you're working off of, look up your manufacturer, figure out how big the holes are in the rig that they drilled for you. Then you're going to go find the same diameter at Home Depot. Um, try to get the galvanized stuff. You don't want something that's going to rust on you. Um, most gyms have a lot of humidity or something in them. So just look out for that. Um, but you'll set these up and then the most important thing for making your life really easy, bands, make sure that you have the same bands pulling on both sides. Sometimes when you go into the gym, we'll just grab two green bands, you set it up and you realize one's totally worn out and then it's just super hard to get a balanced deadlift and you're adding weird bands and stuff like that. So if you can, grab two bands that you know are the same, tie them together, you know, set them aside or make sure that their future use is always done, you know, with the same pulling uh, tension on both of them so they wear out evenly.